it's a new year and a lot of you are going to do your New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions are probably one of the biggest mistakes people make in setting goals for their forthcoming year. Why is there so many people's New Year's resolutions end up falling to the side or they end up giving up on it so quickly? Gym memberships that go expired and don't get used. Plans and goals and dreams that end up faltering and going to the wayside. You don't want that to be you. You actually want to win. You want to attack, achieve, and progress. But New Year's resolutions are probably one of the most ineffective ways to get there. Because they just focus on a moment. They focus on a goal. They don't focus on the systems and plans underneath that. They don't focus on the actual reviewing and reflection of your year and what you can do to make a better new year. So an antidote, a fix, a system for this that I got from Tim Ferriss, I'm going to take you guys through, is called a past year review. This is basically an 80-20 analysis that you can do instead of setting New Year's resolutions, you can reflect and not ignore the last year. You can see what you've done for the last year and how you can approach this year more tactfully. What are things you want to do more of, less of, and what steps can you actually action towards this immediately instead of writing on a piece of paper, New Year, fresh start. No, right now is the opportunity to reflect and put in a plan. So we're going to go through that now. For those who are already a patron, I provided a, P a PDF resource of my actual 80-20 past year review analysis that I'm just going to give you guys. It's in my Patreon uh, below. If for those who are already a member, you can become a member and get access to that if you actually want the PDF document to guide you through. So this process is going to illuminate the 20% of activities, experiences, and outcomes that produced 80% of the positive emotions and, and positive results. So what is the minority that produced the majority of great results? Because it's often this Pareto's rule, 80-20, that is often the explanation for a lot of interesting findings in life. Now, we're going to go the other way. You're going to then determine the 20% of negative experiences, outcomes, and activities that produced the majority, that produced 80% of your negative outcomes and emotions this year. Because often it's the minority of people that you, you encounter and the minority of experiences that take up the majority of the angst and, and emotion and annoyance and negativity of your life. But if you do not stop to take a moment and reflect and plan what that is, then your life will continue in the ugly cycle and you will constantly suffocate your potential of what you could be, who you could be, and what you could do. So, this is a bit of an antidote and a plan for that. Number one, and for those who have the PDF from my Patreon, you'll have this. You can go through it as I'm speaking. You're going to grab a notepad, either PDF, Google Doc, uh, that you guys can go through. You're going to write two columns, or you're going to have two columns, positive and negative. Then you're going to go through your calendar, your diary, Google Photos. Go through what Photos is pretty useful. I have a Google Calendar that documents all my events of the year. If you don't have that, Photos, anything, photographs, anything that you can use that has documented your year that you can flick through day by day. And you're going to look at every week. Now, for every week, you're going to note down people, or activities, commitments that triggered positive or negative emotions for that period. Now, what I've done in the document is I've broken it down based on categories of life. So I would have my profession, I will have uh, business, I will have personal life, I'll have these different categories where the peak positive emotions were experienced. But first, we can just jot this list down. So once you've gone through every week and scrolled through all your photos and videos and experiences, you're going to note down all those peak positive or negative emotions for that month. Do month by month. And then at the end of it, once you've gone through your whole year, you're going to look and ask yourself and write down what 20% of these activities produce the most powerful peaks. You're going to have first your positive leaders, 
your positive peaks, what activities produce the most positive peaks of emotions and best experiences of your life throughout that year. You're going to put that aside. Then you're going to take the negative. What is the 20% of activities and experiences and moments of your year that then produced the majority of the, the negative experiences. It could be a friend. Like everybody's got like, not everybody, a lot of people have like one family member, one friend who just attracts drama, chaos, and negative emotion. And they get sucked into the tornado. It could be a boss at work. It could be a family member. It could be a friend who you love, but just keeps sucking you in to their sucky life. And you kept get pulled in like the tornado. Now, that's one person out of maybe the 50 people you know or that you're friends with or the 20 people that you know. That's a very small minority producing a hell of a lot of heartache and headache. So, now you know, oh man, my work or this obligation or this friend is producing so much negative emotion. Until you do a past year review and reflection, you don't really know. Now, on the other hand, positive emotion, you might have that one friend or that you know, every time you travel to that destination, man, you are buzzing for months, you are buzzing for weeks, or you know, your favorite part of your day is, you know, when you get to sit outside in the sun and do some journaling, or your walks in the morning, or you go to the gym, and that's that's your, man, you feel, but when you exercise and go outside, like, that fills your cup for the rest of the day, even maybe for days on end. Or you or you talk to that person, you see that type of person, and you just feel great for like a long period of time. That, those events, experiences, people, think about those people. Who are those people for you or experiences for you? Now, now that you have these categories, have these experiences, you know what 20% create the majority of negative or positive experiences. What are you going to do now? Okay. Your negative leaders, your negative moments, you're going to put them on a not to do list, a not to do list. These are people that make you, these are people or things that make you miserable, guilty, shameful, annoyed, frustrated. You're going to make a not to do list. Don't schedule time with these people. Minimize contact with these experiences or these people. Uh, don't expose yourself. Get this out of the house. Whatever it is, not to-do list, you're going to pin that up somewhere where it's really visible. Example, bathroom. Example, fridge. Example, bedroom mirror. You're going to pin that up there so you can see it every day, morning and night. Now, on the other hand, you're going to have your positive. What do I need to do more of to lead a better life and live a better life? What habits, what systems, what people, what experiences? And remember, habits and systems very acutely applies to the negative as well. If you need to get that video game console out of the house because it's producing negative experiences because you can't sleep, it's affecting your relationship, you know you need to move that out. You need to control your environment better. I've talked about this in my Atomic Habits book summary. Anyway, positive to-do list. You're going to get your Google Calendar, which I highly recommend for every single one of you to, to manage your time diary, whatever you use, and you're going to schedule with notifications, with emails, with people, more time with those people, more experiences. Maybe it's a weekly walk um, in nature somewhere new every Sunday, every Saturday, every week, more exercise time, more gym, uh, more whatever fills your cup, you need to schedule it. Book commitments, book travel ahead of time. At the end, you should have a column. What should I do more of in whatever year? 2020, 2021, 2022. What should I do less of in 2021, 2022 and beyond? You pin that up. You look at it every day. And then you develop better habits and systems towards attaining less negative and more positive outcomes and experiences. Lastly, you're going to ask yourself and write down this question. What am I continually doing myself that I'm not good at or is a waste of time that could be better invested elsewhere? Reflect on whether you need to improve it, delegate it, or eliminate. So you're going to write that question down. You're going to write delegate. What can you delegate? What can you give to somebody else? Let somebody else do that task. Hire somebody to help you. 
whether it's a spouse, whether it's a friend, whether it's hiring someone off Fiverr to do some monotonous task. For example, hiring someone to edit your videos, hiring somebody to shoot your videos, hiring somebody, a cleaner. You're going to delegate the task of cleaning, gardening, so you can spend those five hours a week elsewhere. Eliminate. Maybe you eliminate cleaning by buying one of those robot vacuum cleaners. Maybe you need to eliminate a job and responsibility and obligation that pays you money, but you know is sucking your soul. Or you need to eliminate. Maybe you delegate meals, meal delivery services. You think about that and plan and implement that now, and your next year will be significantly better than the last in conjunction with your 80-20 analysis of more positive and, and less negative. I hope that's been helpful. The PDF and this resource is below in uh, my link to my Patreon for those who want access to something a bit more guided and they can actually type through and do this as they go along the video. Print that off and then stay accountable and adherent to that process. I do this every year myself. I wouldn't share this with you if I didn't do it myself. I've done it for year after year after year. And it's been an amazing tool and structure to keep me progressing forward and bringing more good into my life and eliminating eliminating more negative so I can lead, live a better, greater life closer to my potential. Because at the end of the day, don't you just want to do what you want to do? As simple as that is, well, this is a gateway to doing more of what you want to do.